Good morning. My name is Michael Creasy, and I'm the superintendent of the National Parks of Boston. We are here up at Bunker Hill Monument today for the 245th anniversary of the Battle of Bunker Hill and the 177th anniversary of the dedication of the Bunker Hill Monument. Even though we are not able to host a formal ceremony up here on the hill, as we typically do on this commemorative day, due to the coronavirus and the limits to public gatherings, we will honor the meaning of this day and remember those who sacrificed their lives for a cause greater than themselves, for freedom and for the right of self-governance. Bunker Hill and the sites along Freedom Trail are more than historical artifacts. They provide us with an understanding of our history and as importantly, can provide us with platforms for dialogue. Bunker Hill is a place where we can honor the courage of the colonists to stand up against tyranny and at the same time challenge patriotic stereotypes that have been etched into our history books. Those freedoms that the colonists fought for they didn't necessarily extend to Native Americans, to African Americans, or women. And some of the recent research that the National Park Service has done has found that almost 103 men of color participated in the battle, black and Native Americans, and possibly upwards to 150. Uncovering and revealing this information reminds us that history is not a tightly bound, single and unchanging story with one true significance, but an ongoing discovery process in which narratives evolve over time as generations develop new questions and new concerns and multiple perspectives are explored. We have always respected the long and continuous traditions of commemoration, especially the commemoration of this site and the sacrifices that we are respectful of. Today, we thank you for joining us in a virtual way up at Bunker Hill Monument for commemorating this anniversary of the Battle of Bunker Hill. Thank you for joining us. Good day. I'm Captain Tom Coots of the Charlestown Militia Company of Gardner's Regiment. On behalf of the officers, enlisted men, and ladies of the unit, I bring you greetings on this 245th Bunker Hill Day. It was on this hill, June 17, 1775, when American liberty was born. Men from various New England towns came and stood here and fought. Men who had different social and economic backgrounds stood shoulder to shoulder. Men from various ethnicities and religions stood together with one determination one purpose and one goal in mind, and that was American freedom. They fought against a much larger unit, the greatest army in the world, the Army of Great Britain. They were here to maintain order, to maintain peace, and to keep what was rightfully theirs. Now, 245 years later, American liberty isn't just born, but it has grown. Our freedoms have endured for the generations. And I pray that for the next 245 years and more to come, America will continue to flourish and be the land that we love so much. Happy Bunker Hill Day. God bless Charlestown and God bless America. My name is Harriet Cross. I'm the British Consul General to New England. The Battle of Bunker Hill plays such a visceral role in the narrative of the events leading up to the American War of Independence that it's a real honour for me to be part of the commemorations today. I live with the Battle of Bunker Hill in that this painting by John Trumbull, American artist, sits in the British residence on Beacon Hill. The painting depicts the death of General Warren and I learn something new every time I look at it. When I look at it today, what it says to me is there's more that unites us than divides us. The painting shows a British officer leaning in to protect the dying General Warren, a very powerful image. Thank you. Hi, I'm City Council Lydia Edwards, and today marks the 245th anniversary of the Battle of Bunker Hill. And while we can't be together, we need to never, ever stop celebrating and honoring the sacrifice of those who came before us. It's our duty today to not just remember the past, but to acknowledge the sacrifices that led to our freedoms today. 
I'm honored to represent a community that is so steeped in its history and understanding that history and our present are deeply connected. We need to never forget the lessons that we needed to learn, but also the inspiration behind some of the greatest sacrifices and battles of our country. I'm here via this video because it means so much to me to never forget where we come from, but also where we're going to go. And we will get there together. So I want to say thank you for this opportunity and never forget those who came before us. This is Commander John Benda, 76th Commanding Officer of USS Constitution, more affectionately known as Old Ironsides, a nickname she famously earned in the Battle of Virtus HMS Guerriere in the War of 1812, the nation's second war for independence against the British. Our mission today is to preserve, protect, and promote not only the legacy of Old Ironsides, but also the, all of the armed services history. We come to you today from the, our home, the Charlestown Navy Yard, in the shadows of the Bunker Hill Monument. And I join the National Park Service of Boston in commemorating the 1,200 Continental Troops under command of Colonel William Prescott, who fought in one of the bloodiest battles of the American Revolution, our first war for independence against the British at the Battle of Bunker Hill. Their, their legacy and memory will also not be forgotten. I'm Julie Hall and I'm the president of the Charlestown Historical Society and I'm honored to be here with you today on the 245th anniversary of the Battle of Bunker Hill. The mission of the Charlestown Historical Society is to protect, preserve, and promote the history of Charlestown. And the Battle of Bunker Hill is one important part of our history, but a very important part of our history. The tenacity and the grit that was shown here on this hill 245 years ago is really the foundation for which our country stands today. And we are so proud to have this battlefield here as a part of our community in Charlestown. My name is Zachary Atwell. I am the current presiding master of King Solomon's Lodge, a lodge of Freemasons. King Solomon's Lodge was chartered on September 5th, 1783, just two days after the signing of Treaty of Paris formally ended the Revolutionary War. In the following decade, the value of the sacrifice made by Joseph Warren and other patriots of the Battle of Bunker Hill was made abundantly clear as our fledgling nation was established. The members of King Solomon's Lodge were so moved by the death of General Joseph Warren that in 1794, they erected a monument to memorialize his killing at the Battle of Bunker Hill. The original Bunker Hill Memorial was very different from the monument that stands today. It was a wooden structure that was 18 feet tall, topped by a gilded urn, inscripted with the initials of General Joseph Warren, aged 34 years, making it the first war memorial erected in the United States. However, due to the inclemencies of the seasons, the wooden monument degraded over time. In 1823, the Bunker Hill Monument Association was formed, and in 1825, King Solomon's Lodge presented the land to the association. On June 17, 1825, King Solomon's Lodge assisted in the placing the first granite cornerstone on the northeast corner of the iconic Bunker Hill Monument that stands today. Every Bunker Hill day, the members of King Solomon's Lodge inspect the replica of the original monument displayed within the base of the obelisk monument, a tradition we have preserved for generations. On behalf of King Solomon's Lodge, I would like to offer a heartfelt thank you to the members of the Bunker Hill Monument Association and the National Park Service for their continued work preserving this magnificent monument. The parade has been very important to me since a young child since I can remember, first thing in the morning, I'd get out, set up the chairs, the parade went right by my front door, and forever, all my life, the parade has been a big part of my life. I've only missed one parade, and that was in 1964 when I was in the Army. I've been a member of the parade committee for 49 years now. Next year I'll be celebrating my 50th. It's a very special day, not for just for the excitement of the parade, but to commemorate the men who fought and died at the Battle of Bunker Hill to help set in motion 
the creation of this great free United States of America.